Where have South Africa's great whites gone? From 2010 to 2016, some of the world's most famous great white sharks were known to congregate in several areas across the South African coast. This included the densely populated sites in False Bay and Gansby, where an estimated population of 900 of the great whites were commonly sighted. However, since 2017, researchers and cage diving operators studying the sharks in this area noticed a sudden, sharp decline in the numbers of sharks spotted. It is unclear how many white sharks there are supposed to be around South Africa. Estimates range from around 500 right up to a 901 population alone. When the sharks were most active in False Bay in 2010 to 2016, there were sightings averaging 205 times per year. However, in 2018, that number took a giant hit, plummeting right down to 50 sightings in that year. And in 2019, the number dropped to no sightings at all. The most recent white shark sighting occurred in January 2020 in False Bay, over a year after the last sighting. For those few years between 2016 and 2020, researchers were baffled as to why the sharks had suddenly disappeared. Alison Koch, a marine biologist for South African National Parks, has studied the white sharks in South Africa since 1998, and she says there is no singular theory for why the sharks have disappeared. However, she claims there are a handful of possible reasons, each one contributing in its own ways, such as local fishing activity which targets species of sea creatures that juvenile shark pups tend to feed on, a decline in breeder sharks within the population and the predation of sharks by orcas present in the area. To begin with, media coverage of the South African Great Whites indicates that demersal shark longline fisheries are the central culprit for the decline. These fisheries target and capture the important smaller shark breeds that juvenile white sharks tend to feed on, which directly impacts the shark's mortality rate. For every single smaller shark that's caught and killed in these areas, there's one less for each white shark pup to feed on and gain nutrients from. Without these, the sharks just waste away. Furthermore, fisheries in and around the KwaZulu-Natal province use shark nets and drumlines, baited hooks specifically targeting sharks to cull the white sharks to prevent them swimming too close to the shore. From 2013 to 2017, on average, 17 great whites died on these drumlines each year. This supports the theory that demersal longline fishing in the area had a direct impact on the drop in the great white population. However, the problem with this theory is that scientists from South Africa's Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries have indicated that there is a lack of data to support it. These scientists say that they can only recommend catch control based on data, but there are no limits in place, and there are ample concerns about the notoriously weak monitoring of the South African coastlines. PhD student Dylan Irian also has some interesting findings. While sightings in the Western Cape have dropped, those in the Eastern Cape have jumped right up, indicating that the sharks may have simply moved, despite the fact that there's still longline shark fishing there. Furthermore, the data being used to fuel this research is relatively new, being that recorded observations in False Bay only began in 1996. It's also important to note that the larger white sharks spend a lot of time far offshore, and the satellite tags used to track the sharks are extremely expensive, which means there's so much movement and data that we never even get to see. To conclude, with all of this information and data that we can't see, we cannot possibly know if the fishing of smaller prey sharks is the primary cause of the decline. Another cause of the decline could be attributed to the decline in breeders within the South African white shark population. Sara Andriotti, a student at Stellenbosch University, studies the genetics of white sharks around the South African coast in a two-year study from 2009 to 2011, Sara estimated that there were only 300 breeders in a single white shark population where the minimum is supposed to be 500 to prevent inbreeding. This low breed account suggests that the male sharks within the population are dying out, either through health difficulties or culling by the local fisheries. This then means that the mature female sharks wouldn't have been able to breed as highly, which could be an explanation for the dwindling shark count. However, there isn't much data to support this, so it's hard to know if this had a significant impact in the difference in sighting counts. The final theory, and the most plausible and supported of the bunch, 
is the recent spike in orca presence along the South African coast. Orcas are known for preying on seabirds, octopuses, sea turtles, rays, fish, and sharks. They're also known for being highly aggressive, especially if they're of the transient type, traveling in pods, acting like wolf packs in order to hunt marine mammals. Furthermore, orcas are the most widely distributed mammals, living in most oceans and seas surrounding coastal countries. However, they prefer to cruise the waters at higher latitudes and quite near to the shore. Since 2015, an increasing number of orcas have been spotted in and around the South African coast. To begin with, two orcas nicknamed Port and Starboard respectively were first spotted in False Bay in 2015. Around the same time, the carcasses of a group of broad-nosed seven-gill sharks were found in False Bay. The teeth impressions from the wounds indicated that the culprit appeared to be an orca. Two years later, in 2017, five white shark carcasses washed up on the shores of Gansby, with their livers removed, and with teeth marks of orcas. At the same time, Alison Koch published a paper on the first documentation of a novel feeding technique, which explained how the orcas used force to break the shark's pectoral girdle, thus enabling them to bite out the liver and discard the rest of the carcass. As a result of this newfound information, Koch theorized that the disappearance of the sharks from False Bay and Gansby was due to the growing orca presence in the area. Koch's theory is further supported by several other orca sightings that were documented at the time. For example, Salvador Jorgensen tagged 17 white sharks off the coast of the Farallon Islands, and they all disappeared. In his studies of the sharks, he found that the white shark can disappear for up to a year during the time that orcas pass through the area. This could be an explanation of the white shark migration to the Great White Shark Cafe between Hawaii and Baja, California. Meanwhile, this natural migration as a result of the orcas could also be an explanation for their disappearance from False Bay, Gansby, and other South African coasts. However, this might be a misinformed argument that's based on the data from two outliers, Port and Starboard. Due to the shark's evasive migration, there was an increase in white shark sightings further along the coast in Mossel Bay. At the end of 2019, Cox studied the orcas that passed through Mossel Bay at the time and found that orca pods had come into an aggregation site with no change in white shark sightings. These orcas didn't include the two orcas known as Port and Starboard, which indicated that these were the only two orcas responsible for the deaths of the white sharks recorded. Nonetheless, at the end of 2019, a video surfaced that shows an orca being interested in one particular white shark in a group. Later data shows that that same shark population dropped from 10 white sharks down to nothing overnight. Therefore, it's hard to say whether multiple orcas are the cause of these deaths, or if it's just those two. Either way, we can say with some level of certainty that increased orca presence in the False Bay and Gansby coastal areas directly impacted the number of white sharks that were around at the time.